lot of research showing independent central banks perform better in various metrics, but you have concerns about independence. So, so what's the nature of those concerns? I, I'm a big believer in monetary policy independence. I worry that too much is now expected of central banks, that they'll solve all of the macroeconomic and financial problems that we have. And I worry that some central banks have powers that make it possible for them to enter territory which really belongs to the politicians. The slogan is central banks is the only game in town and I don't think that's sustainable. Yeah. Are these concerns that uh, for you arose kind of during the crisis and in the post-crisis period or is this something that goes back earlier? This is something you, you've been thinking about worrying over for some time. They came to a head during the crisis, but I've been thinking about them earlier. The Bank of England in the UK gained, regained independence later than any other major central bank. And there was a big debate in the UK from really the late 80s through to the late 90s about that. And we thought very carefully about what powers we should have and what powers we shouldn't have. So compared to the United States, um, the Bank of England doesn't choose the inflation target, it's chosen by the elected um, government. And there's a, there's a kind of more careful distinction than perhaps here about what belongs to politics and what belongs to, um, to technocracy. I think the differences um, across the Atlantic were small beer until you get to the crisis, and then suddenly central banks everywhere are being expected to do more and more and more quantitative easing, credit easing, market maker of last resort. Um, please try to improve productivity growth, which is now a debate in the United Kingdom. And income distribution. Income distribution. In, 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 and most of all, on, in continental Europe, um, please could the ECB rescue the euro area and, can, and ensure that the European project continues um, at all. And at, at that point, my goodness, that's the sovereign. Yeah. Um, that, you know, is Mario Draghi the most powerful person in Europe, and should we feel comfortable I if he is? He's a nice guy, but he, doesn't that raise real questions about democracy, for example? Well, it's, it's, it's exactly that, and if it stays like that, I would expect over time to see people who aren't as nice and aren't as smart to want to do that job. If it's as powerful as that, um, it will start to attract people with political ambitions um, masquerading as technocrats. Yeah. I don't think Mario Draghi is that, um, but he stands so high in the order of European power that it, people are bound to be sitting thinking, I'd like that job one day. In your book, you suggest uh, a range of possible reforms to kind of balance independence of these independent agencies, where, where you argue there is an economic and policy rationale for that independence, but at the same time to balance that with the, uh, with, with the democratic imperative. Can you just describe maybe a couple of those, those sorts of reforms that you would well, be interested in? Well, one I would like to see in this country and, and in other countries would be um, an evolution towards a more precise objective for the regulatory and supervisory function for the banking um, function. Some of your old colleagues are fond of saying that the Federal Reserve isn't as independent um, in s banking issues as it is in monetary policy. I think this is way over exaggerated. They can't get fired. They have control over their instruments and they have budgetary control. Well, that's more independent than the Securities and Exchange Commission. I mean, I know that they have to agree things with other agencies and so it is a bit different, but a bit. The really big difference is that under your time there, um, the Federal Reserve has a fairly precise um, range of targets on monetary policy and so people outside the public Congress can see whether the Fed is achieving what it said it will try to achieve. Whereas on the supervision and regulatory side, the Fed is charged with making banking safe and sound. How safe? How sound? How do we, how do we, how do we know um, that the Fed or the Bank of England or the ECB are doing what they've set out to do on that until there's a crisis and then manifestly they've failed. And I think this is a big, I think this is a big problem. I also think, you asked me for two <coughs> more briefly, 
I think that the Fed needs to make clear that they will not be lender of last resort to institutions that are fundamentally bust. They would say that they don't do that, but they need to make that credible. 